The numbers that we have got today okay. are about double what they were a week ago. What? No. I know. Just to check all the medications, you've been getting them down. Yeah, everything. Everything. You're happy with how he's been eating and no, insulin. and. better get worse. Victoria is always someone I have to deal with very gently. Uh, but bad news never goes down very well, and this is bad news. We need to wait for some more results to come back. <gasps> um, Sorry, this is like, I did not expect this. I know. Well, we, I didn't either. What? I know. I know. At the Richmond Hill Practice, the consult room is open. Hi! Wow, look at you today. Are we a buppy twin? Yeah, we're twinsies today. today. Yeah. One of Scott's most colourful characters has booked in her 13-year-old Chihuahua buppy for his regular checkup. Oh, I love the outfit. Thank oh, you. Vet nurse Gemma is impressed with Victoria's fashion statement. Absolutely. And a tail. And a tail. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Victoria, you look nuts. It's onesie day today, just hanging out, chilling. You know those dictionaries that you yeah. can get with pictures? Yes. You, at the moment, right now, will be under bonkers. You're going... <laughs> in you go. go Thank on. you. Even a tail. How <laughs> have you been getting on with the injections still? Absolutely fine. I mean, right. sometimes he growls at me, but I just put him in the bag and... Give it a go. Amazing, what a long way we've come, hey? I know, I know. It was three years ago that Scott diagnosed Buppy with diabetes. When Victoria found out that Buppy was a diabetic, she was inconsolable. She's needle phobic. She visibly shook. She went white, she sweated. She wouldn't even stay in the clinic. Honestly, we'd go in the consult room, I would take Buppy and she would go outside the front door. So it was extreme. It took six months for Victoria to conquer her fears and give Buppy his needles. I just get on with it because if I don't do that for him, he will die. So I have no choice. I keep him alive. So today, yes. what we're going to be doing is a couple of blood tests. OK. Um, but recently, Scott's been concerned about Buppy's liver results. Today, he's doing more tests to find out what's going on. What we're trying to do is just see, is it on an upward trend or is it on a downward trend? You know, it's probably going to sound silly, but he is my son, as far as I'm concerned. I don't have kids, I have Buppy, and so I have his paws tattooed on me, and he is, he's just my baby, he's the love of my life. Give me the little man. There you go, all right, Say baby. goodbye to your mama. Love you, Buppy. Say mama goodbye to mama. Hey. Oh, I love you. Buppy will now be taken down to the treatment room for the first of his blood tests. Bye, love mama. You, love you, love See you. See you later. Bye. Bye. What was she wearing? She was wearing a onesie, like no. a chihuahua onesie. It almost doesn't surprise me, though. <laughs> so this little guy, we're going to do some blood today. All righty. So you're all nicely set up there, so... Scott and Emma are now starting Buppy's blood tests. The 13-year-old diabetic needs constant monitoring. He's always just so well behaved here, isn't he? He really is. His owner, Victoria, will find out the results tomorrow when she picks up her little buddy. Any separation for the two of them is difficult. See, you're a good boy. boy. Aren't you? My opinion of those two is that they're like conjoined twins. If one's unwell, the other's unwell. If one's not there, the other one starts giving up. When Victoria went to New York a couple of months ago, he lost about half a kilogram. Now, for him, that's about 20% of his body weight. And he did that over a course of just three days. He just stopped eating, he just gives up. I'm doing my best to keep Buppy as healthy as possible but that won't last forever. And when the time comes, I'm really worried for Victoria. Here you go, there's his food. Shreddies. Off you go, champ. Only the best oh, for sir. He's even got some lipstick from mum on his head. <laughs> I lost the onesie this time. Victoria has arrived to find out the results of Buppy's blood tests. Hi. Hiya. Oh, Buppy, mummy's here. Change of outfit, hey? hey? Yes. Oh, hi, baby. <laughs> Mummy's here. Mama's here. Hi, monkey. Okay. So. So, the news isn't brilliant. 
Um, the numbers that we have got today okay. are about double what they were a week ago. What? No. I know. Just to check all the medications, you've been getting them down. Yeah, everything. Everything. You're happy with how he's been eating and no, he's insulin. Happy. And... I'm good at your words. Victoria is always someone I have to deal with very gently. Uh, but bad news never goes down very well, and this is bad news. We need to wait for some more results to come back. <gasps> Sorry, um, this is like, I did not expect this. I know. We, I didn't either. What? I know. Well, his levels have doubled. One of the, the main liver enzyme was 360, <sighs> and now it's 720. The other, the second enzyme that we've been using the new type of medication for um, is so off the scale the machine can't even oh. measure it. What are you saying? His liver's deteriorating. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I just want to know what you're saying. You know what I'm asking. I, I, I know what you're asking. Oh I, look. How much time? I need to know. We're probably looking at months. <laughs> I need to get, get, just go outside. I need to. I need to just take him. I can't. I can't. I can't. This isn't what we were coming here for. I need to. I'm sorry. I have to go outside. Just. You're all right. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's it literally is the worst part of the job to have someone that upset. Is you know. You know, in this instance, it's kind of upsetting a member of your family almost, you know, it's, uh, it gets you on a level. Uh, I mean, it did. Okay. It's not very often that you're caught off guard when you see an animal who seems to be going well, putting on weight, seemingly healthy, well-managed, well-controlled, and the numbers are not reflecting that. We were shocked when we saw the numbers. Oh. I thought, oh my God, my heart dropped because I know how much Victoria thinks and feels about that dog. And I knew that it was gonna be a dark day. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. At the moment, there's nothing that you can do. I knew he was gonna go this year and I need him. <laughs> I do everything I can for him, and um, I just I thought I was doing a good job, so I thought everything was going to be okay. <laughs> he means everything to me, so I'll do him proud. <laughs> to have a client run out of your consult room after you've reported results, it's tough. It's tough. You don't want to upset anyone, and when someone is visibly that upset, it gets to you. We'll see you soon. Thank you. All right. Lots of love. Bye. See ya. Bye. Bye. Is that Dougie for bugger off? Yeah. I think it might oh, be. Well, yes, that's him. <laughs> what the results have shown really is that it's not black and it's not white, and there's still a lot of work for us to do. It's clear Boppy isn't willing to accept his diagnosis. I am struggling to take you seriously. I am. As much as it pains me to see a patient that normally loves me swearing in dog, it's no bad thing because I think what it's showing to me is just how much uh, zest for life he still has. So uh, that's great. I'm happy for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, he will keep going for a very long time. I'm sure he will uh, show us all how it's done, that's for sure. And whilst that's happening, I'll be by your side. Great. Thank you. Pleasure. Victoria had holidays booked in the coming weeks. She's cancelled them. She's that dedicated to that dog that she isn't going anywhere whilst we're unsure as to his future. And, you know, you, you've got to take your hat off to that. I'll see you later. See you later. Bye. Say bye, puppy. Bye. See ya. <laughs> Oof. OK. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Right, right back at you. Yep. OK, bye. Yep. Bye. <laughs> it's all right, boo. <laughs> Dogs, cats. All creatures, great and small, just encapsulates the way that British people love animals. They are a nation of animal lovers. 
and to be able to work in an environment where people are so engaged with their pets that they're willing to do absolutely anything to make them right is nirvana for any vet. Good girl. <laughs> They've just come, we've just come home and they've got a new rabbit and um, I, I don't know, we, 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 we think we maybe... We just found her in the garage. Her blue legs sort of, I mean, almost off, like the back, the back home legs so up, we don't know what's happening. Alice is the much-loved first pet of Pia and Mimi. Come through straight away. Mum Nikki and her distraught daughters came home to find their bunny with horrific leg injuries. So you just got home just a few minutes ago. Yeah, I just literally ran out as soon as I saw. I just grabbed her, put her in the. It's all right, darling. I just put her in the. Um, I just put her in the in the hutch. It's okay. So no idea what what could have caused it. I have no idea. I, absolutely no idea. Yeah. I don't know whether she's tried to get herself through a really ridiculous space, and it's I, I don't know. She's got a, a big skin tear on the side of her body there. Legs hanging really loose, which which is a big concern. They can sometimes panic themselves and, and do things that make no sense and if they get stuck in a, in a particular place they can push themselves or, or, or leap off and, and catch themselves on something. But I just don't know at this stage what she's done. My priority really has to be to, to stabilise her first and then we'll go looking for, yes. for in injuries next. Okay. Right now I just need to make sure she's going to pull through this. Yeah, we've got a hand. Yeah, sure. It's got a really fast heart rate. So she's quite shocky. This is some saline, which is just going to go straight underneath the skin there and she'll absorb that really quickly. The goal of this is really to go into a bloodstream almost immediately and try to boost her blood pressure. If we can do that, it just keeps that blood circulating and really keeps her alive. He's going to do absolutely everything he can, okay? We're two little girls that really want you to come home, okay? So how about we work together as a team? We make that happen, okay? This is just your worst nightmare. I mean, so concerned about Alice, but at the same time, those girls, I mean, it's their first ever pet, and this shouldn't be how, how it is. To make Alice better, I guess, would be alright. Okay, alright, so she's hanging in there. She's, um, she's been a tough little girl. <laughs> she's just resting in a cage at the moment, which is okay. the best thing for her. The reason she's, she's being so tough out there and being so brave is because she knows how much you love her, okay? She's a gorgeous little thing. She's beautiful. We love her. So yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's devastating, it's devastating. As Nikki takes the girls home to wait for news, Chris begins x-raying Alice. Come on, girl, that's scary. This is where our worry is. That's the one with a big gash in it, this one here. It's intact. But here, on that leg that looks awful and is just hanging free, we've got a big fracture there. The big test really is if she doesn't feel any pain in her toes. It means the nerves been severed as well, and that leg would have to come off. You're just going to go in here. Alice needs to rest and recover from the shock. She must stabilise before Chris can treat her injuries. Yeah, just relax there. Later that afternoon, Nikki brings the girls back to the clinic with get well messages for their young bunny. I love you, Alice, from your best friend, Mimi. That's very sweet. So we put that one there. It's beautiful. Hey, she's having a read now. Look. Sadly, there's news that Chris doesn't want the little girls to hear. That leg, I think, is probably going to have to come off. Yeah. If she does pull through, yeah. I'd probably operate on it tomorrow. Oh, thank you, sweetie. Thank you, Pia. Thank you, Minnie. OK, we're going to work really hard to make everything OK. All right? Next day at the Bondi Clinic, Alice needs more time to recover before Chris can begin surgery on her badly damaged legs. Oh, it's a bit slower, isn't it? It's better. The next morning, things get a lot more serious at the clinic as Chris and Neil prepare Alice for her major surgery. Yeah, see, mate, this one's really... Yeah, not good. Floppy there. She has no idea that I'm doing that, no. That leg, it just can't stay there. She's just going to drag it around, cause injuries to herself. So, I hate to say it, it does have to come off. 
this isn't going to be an easy operation. You look at Alice and you can see that she's small and because of that everything is so delicate she can't afford to lose much blood because she doesn't really have a lot to start with. Somehow she's already managed to cope with all this shock and all this trauma. I just hope she's got enough fight left in her to handle this surgery. First thing you always have to do here is just work out where the, the big beating arteries are because they're the ones that if you nick them, Alice is gonna be in trouble really quickly. Yeah, it's really tricky. They're just so sensitive, you just have to do tiny increments. To know what those two little girls have just been through, coming home and discovering Alice looking like that, of course it's gonna put more pressure on you to try to make that better, to try to give them their little Alice back. So what that work's really been leading to, just trying to clear away the blood vessels and the muscles so we can get at this, this bone here. Now, it's not the nicest thing for Alice, but this bit is, is really essential. That leg's now off. Wound's been nicely sewed up, so now we move on to the other leg. But as Chris begins work on Alice's other leg, her heart suddenly stops. Just stop for a second. It's, I don't know if I've got a heartbeat there. No. No. For nearly 10 minutes, Chris and Neil desperately try to revive Alice. Finally, they get her back. Yep, it's there. So I'm just going to really faint heartbeat here. It's quite slow. I'm just trying to stimulate him with some atropine to try to quicken up his heart. Just a few minutes later, the bunny slips away again. No. Stop? No, stop. Stop? Stop. With precious seconds ticking by, Chris is again trying everything he can to kickstart Alice's heart. For 15 minutes, he refuses to give up. Agile, she's already been through a lot, and it just suddenly was, was too much for her, and it's absolutely as gutting a feeling as you can get. You think about Peter and Mimi, and guess who this little guy's for. I'm just really hoping that this is just the best possible surprise for Pia and Mimi. I think they deserve it. It's been two months since Pia and Mimi's pet rabbit passed away. Little Alice suffered horrific injuries to her back legs and sadly died during surgery. My biggest fear throughout all of this was that Pia and Mimi would really lose faith and be scared to ever connect with anything living again. Hey, your mum and I were talking, and we think that it's not right that you girls don't have a little bunny to love in your lives. I think they quite literally thought I'd pulled a rabbit out of my hat. Well, I think they're in total shock. Then I just saw its ears and its eyes, and then I just recognised it, and I was like, whoa. That's a rabbit. 
He's a little boy. It's a boy, guys. I just watched their faces go from this absolute look of surprise to all of a sudden their eyes soften and this little smile come over their face and you knew it was meant to be. If you had to choose a name for a boy rabbit, what do you think? Um, Chris, because you helped us. <laughs> really? I had to choose that name because it was all I could think of. <laughs> Christopher Rabbit. That's pretty cute. <laughs> Nikki's a great mum. Really taking time before they even considered getting another pet. I think he's spot on. You've got to be honest, but at the same time, you have to eventually let them love again. And she's done that. What's his, what's his name? Juice. Oh. At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, 11-month-old Juice has been rushed in by his distraught owners after a shocking screwdriver attack by callous burglars. I just don't understand how something like this could happen to him. Like, he didn't deserve this. He probably just went up to them and jumped up and started licking them. He's so innocent. Oh. OK, so we're just going to lift him onto the table, OK? Dr Laura Musgrove is the first emergency vet on the scene. Two, three. As I get up close, he's got lacerations all over his face and it looks like he's been stabbed in the eye. There's blood everywhere, there's blood on the inside of his collar. He looks awful, the owners are really upset. And honestly, I can't really see a lot to do with the eye because he's squinting, but it doesn't look good at a first glance. Come on, darling. It's all right. Poor little man. Distressed owners Meg and Todd are horrified at the sickening attack on their beloved Staffy. We think they've personally thrown juice. Juice has followed them into their house and he's startled them. And they've thrown juice into the wall. They have a massive Wait. hole in the wall with blood all oh, through it still. Sweetie pie. And it seems like they've hit his head against a door frame and there's blood all over the door frame. So it's just. Uh, I can't even comprehend. Oh, it's sore, isn't it? Hey. It's all right, sweetie. This left eye looks like totally perforated. Um, and he's got some other wounds as well on his face. Mm. Oh, I know, I know. We'll need to get a bit more pain relief on board and do a better look there. Mm. I'm just going to take this off. That's quite tight, isn't it? Well done. Here we go. Oh, I Good boy. I'm just going to try and have a better look at the eye using the ophthalmoscope because I really just want to see if things are intact or what the extent of the damage is. But it's a real mess in there. Oh, sweetie pie. It's sore, isn't it, he? His eye looks terrible. Poor little man. It just makes me so angry that someone could have done this to him. Can we hold your eye open a bit? Good lad. It's really difficult to see a lot with Juice's eye at the minute. Um, there's a lot of bleeding. We can't even see his pupil. I think his cornea is possibly ruptured, and I'm not even sure he can see out of that eye at this stage. So it's looking pretty bad. All right, darling. This next bit's not going to be too nice, though, is it? Good boy. Can we hold your eye open a bit? Good lad. Looking at Juice's eye, it's actually really difficult to know how much damage there is. There's so much swelling, and he's holding it close because of the pain. I want to make him comfortable, flush out any debris and blood clots in there, and assess his other wounds. Should we just give a little clean of your face? Mm. Good boy. Yeah, it looks much better now, doesn't it? I think we might leave it at that for that eye now. It's not the nicest thing, is it, buddy? All right. A bit more. With juice stabilised and given pain relief, Laura now has the difficult task of talking to heartbroken owners Meg and Todd. Hello. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Okay, I'm Laura. I know we briefly met a little while ago yeah. and things were a little bit stressful. Um, okay, so first of all, I just want you to know he's okay. All right, so we've got him stabilised. I mean, I think he's very sore and probably in a little bit of shock from what's happened, OK? You know, if it is a screwdriver that's gone in. At this stage, we don't know how much damage it's done. We need to let things settle a little bit, but I guess the worst-case thing is that he could end up losing that eye. 
Okay, so what we'll do is the next step is we'll get our ophthalmologist to come and have a look at it and just see, you know, whether we can save it. Okay. okay. Thank you. It's all right. I'm not sure Meg and Todd have been able to grasp exactly what I'm saying. I think they're still in shock from everything that's happened, and I'm not sure they understand that Juice could potentially lose his sight, and worst case scenario, he could lose that eye. Hey, Juice. Juice, look who's here. There you go. Juicy. Juicy. Take care, buddy. I hate seeing him. It's like, just... He's so never, helpless. Ever, ever like yeah, that. he's never made that noise before. So I just hope he settles a little bit. I feel really sorry for Meg and Todd. They've had a day from hell. Not only have they had their house robbed, they've now got to leave their beautiful boy here in hospital. I just really hope we can save that eye. Okay, guys. All good. All right, okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, honestly, our pleasure. Come on. Oh. At SASH, emergency vet Dr Laura Musgrove has called in ophthalmologist Dr Alison Groth to look at Juice's horrific eye injury. He's been stabbed in his eye with a screwdriver and other places on his face, but this eye really worries me because I'm not really sure whether whether he can see anything out of there, so... Wow. I'm oh hoping God. we can find out a little bit more <laughs> and potentially <laughs> save the eye, but, I mean, have you ever seen anything like that I've before? I've never seen anything awful. like that before. Awful, isn't it, darling? It's horrible. If it's a pretty major injury for juice, the eye has been ruptured, some of the tissue from inside of the eye is coming out, and the eye does not respond to light at all. When I move my hand towards his face, he doesn't show any normal reflexes, which is why I'm worried that there is injury deeper within the eye. So, it's, I mean, it's not looking very good. Um, he, he's, he doesn't seem to have any vision in that eye. All right, well, we'll ultrasound to see whether there's any damage further within, and okay. I'll let you know how we go. OK, mister. Good luck. Good boy. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think Alison has the same fears as me, that there's a lot of swell in there. At the minute, we don't think he can see out of that eye, and so I think she's probably as worried as I am that he might end up losing that eye. It's a very collapsed eye, so it's very difficult to um, see what I'm doing. Poor guy. So this here is the retina. The retina should be lying right against the back of the globe, but it's become separated. And when the retina is not in its normal position, it doesn't work properly. And if the retina doesn't work, then there's not going to be any vision. It's really, really sad. Yeah, it doesn't look good. So the ultrasound confirmed the injury was really severe um, and the best thing for Juice is going to be to remove the eye. Ah, oh, poor puppy. Certainly no chance of saving this eye. The decision was made quite easy for us by the fact that he wasn't going to have a chance to see. So the first thing we do is remove all of the attachments and then manage any bleeding generally a surgery that has a very low risk of complications, but all of the tissue is very inflamed and very swollen. And this is going to take a while because it actually is a bit more difficult than usual. With the surgery underway, it's a harrowing wait for Juice's distressed young owners, Todd and Meg. I just feel so bad that he's going to lose his eye. Only being 11 months old and the rest of his life not having an eye is just so sad. But he's, uh, he's pretty strong and happy, so... He's a happy, playful little dog. He'll still be strong anyway. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be OK, but yeah, I guess we're just in shock. There's a lot of bruising in here. Alison is also shocked to discover Juice's wound has penetrated far deeper than first thought. The injury does appear to extend all the way through the eye and actually involves the back part of the eye as well. It wouldn't have taken too much more force for there to have been fracture of the skull and even injury to the brain. It's now time for the critical part of Juice's surgery. 
This is it. Poor little eyeball. Just rinsing it out with some saline to make sure it's nice and clean and reduce the likelihood of infection. As sad as it is that he's lost this eye, it will just heal like a cut and there will be a small scar potentially and he'll just look like he's winking. We're done. I'm very happy with how it's gone and I think he'll bounce back really well. Um, we've just got to take extra special care of that remaining eye. Boy. Right, boy. Hello, my darling. How are you feeling today? Hey, how are we feeling? Do you want to come out? Oh, let's have a little look. Hello, hello. Hang on now. It's been just 24 hours since American Staffy Juice had major surgery to remove his left eye. Come on, then. Come on, Juice this way. Good boy. After a brutal attack with a screwdriver left the 11-month-old critically injured, Juice has made a remarkable recovery. Juice, is this? Hi. But before he can get the all clear to go home, Laura and intern Grace need to give him a final check. Well, he's so much brighter, isn't he? He's been really comfortable. When Juice came in the other night, he was, you know, in shock, he was whimpering, his eye looked absolutely terrible. Oh, how does that feel to have your head back? Today, he is so much happier, he's definitely on the road to recovery, and I can't wait to send him home with Mom and Dad. Can I have a little look, my sweet? Yes. Oh, boy. It looks good. so good. This is all stitched up nicely. Yeah. Well, Juice. I think that looks great. You know what that means? Do you know what that means? We can go see Mum and Dad. For owners Meg and Todd, it's been a heartbreaking ordeal and they're anxious to see their brave boy. All we've been thinking about is being able to finally come and see him again. So, I, yeah, I just I don't even care what he looks like. I just want to bring him home. Come on, then. Come on. We're going to go see Mum and Dad. Who have we got out here? <gasps> Who's that? <laughs> there we go. Words cannot explain how happy I'm feeling right now. As soon as we saw Juice's face, with his tongue just hanging out, oh, it's the best feeling I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> hey, are you glad to see Mum and Dad? <laughs> how much better does he look, hey? You're so happy. So happy. Laura has prescribed massive doses of TLC as Juice recovers with his relieved and doting owners at home. It looks like the operation was done a week ago and it was done yesterday. Like, it's amazing how Such a good job. tidy it is now and now it's just keeping it from getting infected and hopefully the hair will grow over it and he'll just have some tough little scars and a permanent wink. OK, Juice, come on then. Come this on. way. Thank you so much for everything. Come on, Juice. Come on. Come on, Juice. Home's this way. <laughs> See you later, guys. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Sad. Juice experienced probably one of the most horrific attacks I've ever seen on a dog. And to actually come out of it how he has is brilliant. Yeah, he might have lost an eye, but he's going to go home with Megan Todd and he's going to go on to live a happy, normal life. Go. Good boy. I'm so happy. He's so cute. Come on, Joyce. Chris, there? Oh, really? Yeah. A phone call alerts Coming Chris out. to an emergency case about to arrive at the clinic. All right, Kurt, come straight through. All right, so what's happened? It's been stung by a blue bottle in the mouth. 100%. He's down at Malabar throwing the sticking off the rocks. Came back like this, and I thought he had a twitch or something. Picked up a stick with a blue bottle on it, and then he was shaking his head. So definitely stung by a blue bottle. Blue bottles are a constant danger on Australian beaches. Along the line of the blue bottle tentacle are a whole lot of stinging cells. Now these, once they detect skin or the inside of Kaiser's mouth, in this situation, they fire a little arrow, and that arrow contains a toxin. Not only is that extremely painful, the worrying thing for me right now is that this is going to start to shut off that airway. And in a boxer like Kaiser, there's not much room to start with. Yeah, 
There's a little bit of swelling around the back of his throat there. It, that lymph gland is just the slightest bit enlarged actually at the moment. What I might do straight away is give him an injection of a corticosteroid to try and um, basically reverse the effects of any allergic reaction he could be having to the sting. Okay. Do you mind if I take him out the back to give him this? No. I just need to get someone to actually hold that vein up for me. Yeah, that's alright. He's alright. Thanks mate, I won't be a second. The worrying period for me is the next 10 or 20 minutes. That is the time when it could shut down the airway altogether. There's no reason why a blue bottle sting to a dog in that mouth or throat area couldn't be fatal. Oh, man. Is he alright or what? Touch the wood, eh? The thing about blue bottles is that it's once they hit the lymph glands they can have pretty dramatic effects on the circulation. They can cause a pretty big drop in, in blood pressure. His breathing is just, just a little bit gurgly at the moment and he, he's, he's quite agitated. It's my wife, like he's, he's my boy, you know. I hope he's all right, yeah. Now the blue bottle sting is certainly going to be causing a lot of the anxiety we're seeing in Kaiser. But I can't help but think that some of it's also coming from Kurt. Kurt's wound up, he's stressed, he's very afraid about what's going on. And as a result, Kaiser follows suit. Oh, come on, come on. The more stressed he becomes, the more oxygen he actually needs. And right now, every bit of oxygen he actually gets into his body is golden. I'm just gonna go in slowly here. Chris gives Kaiser an anti-inflammatory shot to quickly bring down the life-threatening swelling. That's relaxed in there a little bit too. You can see the effect that's had. You see he's just breathing a little bit more comfortably. Yeah, just waiting here, I just felt physically sick, like seeming still a bit shaky, you know? Um, like I said, I'd sell everything for my dogs, you know, any one of them, like, they mean everything to me. Kaiser is lucky. Within half an hour, his breathing has stabilised. Oh, you relaxed, aren't you? Look at that. Kurt is still stressed. He's so in love with Kaiser, he's about to get a tattoo of the boxer. Oh, I know that I want him fit on my body, like, I mean, you know what I mean? It means, yeah, it means the world to me, yeah. Hmm. Yep. Where is he, Kaiser? Oh, my God. It's Kaiser, boy. Hello. Hey, Chris. There he goes. Is he alright or what? No, he's fine. Yeah? He's going to be okay. okay. Yeah. Sweet. 100%. Got, yeah, I mean, he's a little bit shaken by the whole thing. Mm. Good on you, buddy. I'm seriously like, you don't understand. Like, I'm like, freaking out. Yeah, you know, it's fine. Cool. Oh, yeah, I could tell that. Don't worry. It's a lifesaver. I'm really struggling to think of a time where I've felt more appreciated in my life. But at least he's saying thank you, and that really means a lot. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Busek. If you love our show and want to see more amazing stories from the Bondi Vet team, just hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you for our next video.